Hello and welcome. I'm DDF Racer, and today I'm going to be doing my first ever VRS GT3 sprint race in iRacing. This is probably one of the most popular series in iRacing, second only to the Rookie Mazdas, which means that there's going to be lots of splits. Now, lots of splits also means closer competition, which also means better racing, theoretically. I say theoretically because the VRS GT Sprint Series features, well, GT3 cars, which are pretty much the universal yardstick of sim racing. They're not super difficult to drive, although they're definitely not the type of car you can just jump in and be quick, but with ABS and traction control they can be quite forgiving once you get past the whole cold tyres on the first few laps thing. My choice of GT3 for today's race will be the BMW M4, simply because I already bought it so I could take part in the Bathurst 12 hours a few months ago. And today's circuit, well, if you hadn't already recognised it from the footage on screen by now, it's Lime Rock Park, the version without the chicanes. It's an incredibly short circuit with very fast lap times, high speed sweeping corners, no room for manoeuvre, tricky elevation changes and only really one overtaking opportunity. When you factor in the large grid as well, it's um... Well, I think traffic's going to be a massive issue today, whether the cars around you are on the same lap or not. Should be a busy one today. Hope you guys enjoy. That's the end of the session. B18. Okay, not a great start to my uh, VRS GT3 sprint career in high racing. Uh, qualified 18th out of 23 cars. Now, I am car number 10, which says I should be a lot higher on the grid. And to be honest with you, I mean, I did a 48.5. I can do a 48 flat, which would put me 10th on the grid. So iRacing is absolutely spot on. I'm feeling quite nervous about this. There's lots of cars. It's a tight, twisty, small track. Hmm. Let's just survive the first few laps. And of course, a rolling start here today in the GT3 class, with a pit stop most definitely required. Uh, in the BMW, I'll need about 75 litres to make it to the end, and it only has 60 in the tank. Can't actually put any more in than that, so... It, it does normally have a bigger tank than that. It's usually like 115 or something, but yeah, limited to 60 for today's race, so... Mandatory stop in effect, basically. 40 minutes. P18. There's just something nerve-wracking about formation laps. It just adds that extra waiting time, that extra holding time. It's not just grid up and green light. I still find it amazing how virtual cars and virtual circuits and virtual racing can make you feel so nervous and make, you, make your heart go so much. Stay calm. Focus. Go, go, go. My botched that one up a little bit. Right side. Clear right. Had to get on the brakes heavy then. All right. Clear right. Right side. Still there. Getting hung out to dry. Someone else is having an accident up ahead of me. I'll sneak that position oh, back. Down. Good start. Lift out of it. Not worth it just yet. Long race today. And over the rise. Woo! Okay, these guys up ahead look messy. Let's get the run onto the straight. Where are we? Nail every corner. Let's take whatever chances we can. 16th place. On your way. Still there. Hold your line. Clear left. Round the outside. There we go. Needs to get past him ASAP. Oh, that was that was scary. Back on with the race. I know that my qualifying pace wasn't great, so I am expecting to make up a few positions today. Oh, someone's in the wall! Stay over there, Lucky Bricks. Thank you very much. There's another freebie. 13th place. Up to 13th, nice. Five spots already. That's top 10 right in front of us there. 
Rear tyres are still a bit cold, uh, Dan. Careful, careful. Don't push on, on the brakes too hard just yet. That was so close to being a bin. It's one way I could describe this race, this car track combo. It's just claustrophobic. I know people always go about Monaco being, you know, riding the bicycle around your living room. GT3's here. Kind of has that same feeling. Although I watched an empty box race a few years ago where he drove the Camels GT series around here. That was sketch -esque. 12. That's the fastest lap of the race. That lap was a 48.79. I thought the guy behind was going for it then gave him a bit of space. That just slowed both of us down. Oh! Yep. Too much heat in the tyres there. Alexandra behind. Looks pretty feisty. Need to get away from him. Okay, left tyres are up to pressure now. You can see on the readout on the in-car dash, the yellow light has gone off them. Up to 1.57 on the front left, 1.55 on the rear left. Get the drive onto the straight. Three seconds behind, 11th. Obviously, someone else has binned it. We're up to 12th now. Don't be distracted. Defend your position. The 11th. Oh, we're up to 11th. We've got another freebie. Maybe people are just getting the pit stops out of the way now. Although, with it being such a short lap, having a pit stop here is going to put you way out of sequence, maybe even a lap down. Even though it's only 15 litres of fuel and no tyres, it's, it's going to mess with the strategy. So, coming into the pits is going to be all about finding that gap. Oh, that corner never gets not sketchy. You're pulling away. The gap behind is now 0.9. There we go. It might look like an incredibly simple circuit. Oh, we got some more death up ahead. There's another freebie. P10. It might look like an incredibly simple circuit, but it is so technically challenging. It really is. There's so many, like, different lines through these corners because of the camber. And because of the elevation changes, it's, yeah. Refueling window will open after 22 minutes. It's incredibly, incredibly technical. Thank you, Pierre. And such a fine line between getting a corner right and getting a corner wrong because it is so high speed. That final corner there, you've got to get, you've got to nail it. You've got to get that apex. But if you get too much apex, it's curb. And that throws the car wide. That lap was a 48. And you want to try and turn in from as far as you can on the left there without getting anywhere near the grass. As soon as you get near the grass, you lose all of the grip. And you, oh, that one, that right hander, you got to turn in so much earlier than you think as well. And don't even get me started on uphill here. Do I lift? Do I not lift? Do I rev the nuts off it? Haven't quite figured that one out yet. Oh, they're going wide up ahead. They drop the guy behind though, which is nice. You gotta tuck into that apex. It's centimeter stuff, it really is. We're already on lap eight now, with six minutes down in the race. Need to catch up to these guys. You've just done a 48.92. Sector three is 0.47 off the pace. Wait for the apex. It's got a tighter second half. Big bend. That's better. More tucked in there. But the Delta doesn't agree. Delta says we're losing time now. It's very confusing. There's so many different lines around here. Late apex. Turn it in early because the car washes out over the crest. Late apex here as well. Don't take too much curb. And then just, yeah turn it in and hope for the best, just a little feather. Oh! Oh, sketchy, sketchy, sketchy stuff. We're in 10th though, that's good. Top 10 achieved already. Let's just hold it. Using third gear there for a bit more stability. I know some people pop it down to second. I don't like to do that because it unsettles the rear of the car too much for me. 
Oh, running wide there. Had to get out of the accelerator. Now we're like two tenths, three tenths down. That makes a big difference. All those tenths here. Oh, so close to being an off track. The gap behind is now 0.6. He's getting closer. It's all about getting that run onto the main straight. About half a second off what I should be doing right now, pace-wise. Okay, Dan, hold your nerve, just keep it smooth, no mistakes. But that was a 48.71. Peter. Might pop the bias forward a little bit, just one click to help with the rears in turn one. Oh, turned him way too early there. Lost a stack of time. Old mate behind's getting closer. It's not good. Get the run. Dropping behind Nick in ninth. Although he's kind of a very similar eye rating as well. That last lap was at 49.01. Never quite get the hang of the rear in this GT3. It looked a lot more comfortable at Bathurst. That's because it was. That's because we had the magic of the Zancho engineers working on the setup and also <laughs> hours and hours and hours and hours of practice. The car in front of us is wood. I mean, I've put a solid hour or two's worth of practice in for this, but nowhere near the level of practice put in for Bathurst 12 hours. But then again, this is a much shorter race than the Bathurst 12 hours. Driving my trusty BMW M4 GT3 with the big Zancho stickers. All over the side. Thought I'd pop it down to second then. Why not? If we start getting held up behind someone, I will be looking at a pit stop because it looks like there's a bit of a train forming up ahead now. It's so difficult to overtake around here. The only real way is to get a run out of the final corner on the guy ahead and then nail him into the first corner. But it's so hard to get a run because there's, there's not really much separating the good from the bad in that final corner. Unless you clunk the curb like I just did and lose a few tenths. Make him do all the work. Focus on your exits. Your lap time was at 48.61. Sector 2 is 0.37 off the pace. Definitely struggling. Oh, that's not nice. That's not nice. Someone's not having a good time over the radio. But that's not the kind of language you use, because that will get you banned from iRacing. Oh, the guy behind's got a run. He is faster. Is he going to go for it, Mr. Mr. Cusworth? Still there. We're right. The 11. That was a 49. I'll let you have that, mate. No point fighting that. Oh, that puts the guys behind back on the tail as well. Cuz was through. Let's follow him. Let's use him to catch up. Let's use his draft down the main straight because that's. Well, he he is faster. He is faster. He's proven that. Oh ho ho ho. In VR, that never sits easy on the stomach, trust me. Coming over the crest like that. I don't know what the proper etiquette is yet. Do you lift? Do you floor it and rev and nuts? I know I said it at the start, but I just don't know. Oh no, three namer behind. Oh no. Tenth position. That lap was at 49.34. Sector one is 1.1 off the pace. Oh, I'm losing, losing time now. I'm going to put that bias a bit more to the forwards. 
some help with the rear end because I'm definitely struggling with the rear on corner entry. Alright, Dan, hold your nerve, just keep it smooth, no mistakes. Oh, I'm trying! I'm trying my best, Spotter, but we're kind of falling back a bit now. We're still in 10th, but we're going to have to make a pit stop at some point. That lap time was 48.82. Sectors 1 and 3 are 0 0.40 off the face. Sector 2 is 0 0.33 off the face. Thank you. Go ahead, it's not pulling away too much. This is a decent lap so far. That brake bias adjustment has definitely helped with my confidence, if not anything else. I kind of trust it a bit more now, you know? The gap ahead is now 0.7. Right. All about flow here. I'm going to have a couple of quiet laps and see if I can get back up to him. Headphones on, volume up, GT3s at Lime Rock Eye Racing. Here we go. Just done at 48.41. Thank you. Do another one. That lap time was 48.57. Sector 3 is 0.38 off the pace. It's only a short lap. <laughs> I had to bail out of that quiet lap early to do some stupid noises. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Right. Let's focus. Let's catch up. Your lap time was 48.73. Yeah, I'm about half a second off what I should be doing. Oh, cool, the track temps increasing. It's now 26 Celsius. That's not going to help the tyres. And there will be no tyres at the pit stop, which I'm going to have to start thinking about soon. Oh, way too hot entry. You could hear the rear sliding out then. Temps are going to be a bit high now, so be careful on entry for a few corners. You've got half your fuel left. The smallest of margins here in this GT3 at Lime Rock. Just make the biggest of differences. It's kind of like... You've just done a 48.55. Oval racing, you know? <laughs> it's got that same kind of feel. It's all about the consistency and the flow. You don't have the, the draft packs, though. You know, like the slipstreaming and all that kind of stuff. It's not that... It's not got those oval aspects to it. But it's got that feel to it where you kind of in a pack, in a holding pattern. Just getting into the zone. And I hope you guys are in the zone as well. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. If so, don't forget to leave the video a like, share your thoughts in the comments below, and subscribe because this GT3 series... Well, it's... Behind has now decreased to 0.8. That well, it's popular for a reason. Sector 3 is 0.41 off the face. It's pretty good, with the mix of cars in here as well. Got some more people whinging on the comms here. Not quite sure what the go is. But the cars are getting pretty spread out now. 
So I wouldn't be surprised when pit stops start to take effect as well to see some kind of traffic come into play here. So we're more than able to come in at any point now and make our stop. It's all strategic. You've just done a 48.65. So all I need to do is add 15 litres, no tyres, and we're good. Bit of cloud cover there. That should take a bit of track temperature out, help the tyres a bit more. Gaps are very stable. Everyone's running quite consistent laps here at the moment. That drama and carnage from the start of the race, that seems to have died down a bit. Everyone's just doing their thing, you know, just surviving. <laughs> Oh, way too much curb on the inside then. That kills the run completely. Look at the delta. Four tenths down, four and a half tenths down. Oh, not good. That lap was at 48.84. No! Too wide! Oh, that was so close to sailing onto the grass on the left there, and that would be a 20 second, 30 second recovery easy, because once you get on the grass here, there's no grip and you just basically continue on the trajectory you were on to begin with. It's like someone turns gravity off, but in a 2D sense, instead of falling down, you just continue traveling in the direction you were going in. Oh, guys behind are getting closer. The gap in front is now 2.6. And the guy ahead's getting further away. I need to focus. He's going to have slipstream now. Pablo, car number 21, making his way up through the field. Oh, too wide, too wide. Let's get the cut back in. Defend your position. Don't let him through. Oh, I'm trying. He's flashing the lights. At You're not JB. You're not allowed to do that. If you want to get past, you got to make your way past, bro. Right side. Still there. Hold your line. Clear right. That was a 49.00. There's no easy way to get overtaken here. All right, Dan, keep it nice and smooth. Come on, let the race come to us. That's 20 minutes to go. That's halfway. I'm guessing these guys have made pit stops. They've got way too much pace, and they're far too down the order for the times they're doing. Maybe I should consider doing mine as well now, because I'm losing so much time with these overtakes. Oh, he's got me as well. Car right. Clear right. You're clear. V12. You've just done a 49.64. Don't give up. Keep him under pressure. I told you traffic was going to be an issue. These guys have definitely pitted. Because they're making their way back up through the field again. I'm losing so much time, but I might stick with it for a little bit. Because... You've got 10 minutes of fuel remaining. Oh, because they've got to get past the guys up ahead. And they're going to have the same problem. So they're going to slow down the comp uh, competitors up ahead of me. Let's just hang in there for a little bit longer. I got my first incident point of the race then. It was going to happen at some point running light over the top of that crest there. <laughs> Okay, Dan, don't let this guy distract you. I'm trying. Yeah, these must be the leaders trying to get through that. Maybe that's why he was flashing. Because he's like, get out of my way, you peasant. Well, if it's a track position, Pablo, I'm not I'm not just gonna dive out of it. You can flash all you want, mate. It's not gonna not gonna make a difference. I've been flashed far too many times. Wait, that sounds wrong. <laughs> Behind is now 0.6. I've been flashed far too many times for it to have an effect. 
Old mate's coming in the pits. Clear right. He's a lap down. Oh, he's not. He's a lap down. He's moving out of the way. I thought he was coming in for a stop then. That lap time was 48.89. Thank you. Thank you. Got Tommy, the leader, coming up behind us to saw in the delta there. I heard a thank you over the comms. Yep, that's that's the leader, so he's definitely not stopped yet. Or if he has, he's got a whopping lead. Oh, lost touch with the guys ahead. All right, we got maybe about nine laps of fuel left. Time was at 48.57. I genuinely don't know how to play this. I genuinely don't know what to do with the strategy. We've got someone off there. We've got two people off. A couple of freebies. Okay. Well, that's that's going to help. Although it's always a little bit of a code brown when you see someone facing the wrong way on the outside of the circuit. Old up ahead's running wide. Okay, that was a good final corner then. I'm still hovering over the brakes just for like a confidence thing more than anything else. Thank you. Tenth position. That lap was at 49.00. Gaining on this car, the gap is not We are actually gaining on this car, considering he got past us. He's not really pulled away too much. So if he is a leader coming back through, we're kind of holding station with him a little bit. Maybe he didn't put enough fuel and he's got to save, I don't know. I'd have expected him to have been much further down the road by now, considering how quickly he got past. Or maybe I just had a couple of scruffy laps, maybe that's all there was to it. Done a 48.56. But I am I am enjoying this though. Fifteen minutes left. Yeah, old made up ahead, he's definitely struggling. He's not pulling away in the same way I thought he would do. Can you some of that slipstream? Nice! Yeah, I need to stop braking in that final corner. It's just the lift corner. E9, your last lap time was at 48.37. That's your fastest lap. Nice! Personal fastest lap of the race! Seems like the worst possible time to come into the pits. Now I've found some pace, <laughs> but I'm gonna have to. Got about six laps of fuel remaining. I might leave it to the last minute, you know. Oh, almost ran wide again. Okay, Dan, we estimate you've got five minutes of fuel remaining. Yeah, it's not a lot of fuel, that's for sure. I'm coming in the pits. Pit lane speed limit is 56 kilometers per hour. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm coming in the pits then. I guess I, uh... <laughs> I guess that's one way you do pit entry. Hopefully I don't get a penalty for crossing the line. That was not intentional in the slightest. I hope, for, I hope I don't get a penalty for that. That was sketchy as. No penalty, please, no penalty. There's traffic behind. We're good! <laughs> oh my days, how did I get away with that? I would say it was great quick thinking, but then I actually switched the engine off instead of pressing the pit limiter button there. They're next to each other on my button box. 
And in a hurry, I pressed the wrong one. I, I should really put the engine uh, off button somewhere safe. And not right next to a button that I use in a very critical moment of the race. Oh my days, that was... That was sketchy, but we survived somehow. I don't even think I got an instant point for it. Did I? No! I didn't even get an incident point for it. Okay, nice. <laughs> Keep it nice and smooth. Come on, let the race come to us. P12. Okay, we're still in 12th. That's good. We've got some guys up ahead of us for position as well. Nice tasty fight here. The gap in front is now 1.0. I think I may have put a little bit too much fuel in. Oh well, no biggie. Top 10 is still the goal for the today's race. And uh, let me know in the comments whether you think that was a bin or a master stroke, guys. <laughs> oh, that's getting, that's, that's gonna be used on some replays, that's for sure. Time was 48.86. Well, there's a free bit. Oh, he's, he's a lap down. Oh, never mind. I thought I got a position then. Never mind. He's just getting out of the way. The only way he knows how. Via an off track. Now, I'm losing touch with Pablo up ahead of us. Now, that's not the same Pablo who flashed the lights, was it? It is! That is the same Pablo, so that was the position. Okay, Dan, come on, stay focused. Apexes and exits, apexes and exits. E11, the lock time was 48.88. Well, that changes the dynamic slightly then, because if that Pablo is for position, I can only hope he uses the same level of aggressiveness on the opponents in front of him that he used on me, with the flashing of the lights as well. Because if he does, he's going to slow people down, or worse, take them off. Yeah, he's, he looks... I could see him moving offline. The gap ahead is now 2.5 seconds. Up ahead, he's going to... He's he's going to send it. If ever there's someone who was going to send it, it was going to be him. We've got someone up. Carlos Montoya coming into the pits. That's ten minutes left. All right. Looking all right here. Keep your concentration nice and smooth. Three quarters of the way through the race. Was at 48.62. Sector one is 0.38. Off the pace. Ten minutes to go. All the strategies are starting to play out now. The guy in front is Irby. Oh, he looked pretty spicy to me. Alright, 10 minutes to go. And that's a couple of cars up ahead for position. 10 minutes of fuel remaining. Oh! Oh, got away with that. Got away with that. I need to concentrate. Quiet lap incoming. Quiet lap incoming. There's a car rejoining in front. Last lap was at 49.24. Sector 3 is 1.1. Off the pace. Dude, blue flag move. You're a fucking asshole. Flag right there. The leader's pitting now. Sorry, Kevin, that was a glitch from my end there. Bit of angst on the radio there on that lap. We've got people pitting all over the place now. The lap time was 48.59. Blue flag. Tommy the leader with the blue flag coming through shortly. Let's try and do it on the main straight. Let's try and do it in a place where we lose as little time as possible. 
Not through one of these corners going side by side, which will kill both of our runs. Just a few more tenths, that's all I need. I can be on the back of these guys up ahead. Tommy's getting closer. So that's 7th, 8th and 9th up ahead of me. I'm in 10th. That was a 48.87 blue flag. Like the Tommy's a little bit too far back at the moment for me to be moving out of the way. Once he gets within like two or three turns. Yellow flag, caution, keep it within the track limits. V9. Was that a freebie? Is that someone dying up ahead? Tommy's still seven tenths back. Right side, clear to the right. Thank you. Didn't lose too much there, only a second. I didn't want to hold him up for another lap, he can go. We've got Dustin Smith, the next guy I need to let by, about six seconds behind. My plan is to let, let him go, let the leader go. Let him get stuck into the two cars ahead, disrupt them. If I can, if I can stick with Tommy, that's my plan with six minutes to go. <laughs> if I can stick with Tommy, the leader of the race. <laughs> He's already 1.5 down the road. Come on, DDF. Be realistic. You've just done a 49.80. Get the run. Good lap so far. I'll tell you what, there is one thing to be said for shorter circuits like this, is that you get a lot of practice at each corner. It's not like the Nordschleife where, it, you know, you're going around for like five, six minutes to go. In this, it's like, okay, 40 seconds, boom, done, try again. Well, in this case, 48 to be specific. was at 48.67. All right, Dan, five minutes to go, five minutes left. Guy behind is for position. The actor Oliveira behind is now 1.7 seconds. We'll be warned about track limits. Oh, that was scruffy. Right, to the right. That was scruffy. I got my entry all wrong and that just hit the curb and sent me wide. We estimate you've got five minutes of fuel remaining. Oh, it's this Ferrari dude! Just keep fighting, just let me by. Tommy the leader. He's getting upset with these guys up ahead. Okay, here you go. Peter, you reel in. Oliveira in. The gap Adam is zero on number three three. Alright, try and pull over for ya. Let's see if we can get this guy back. Let's get back our P9. Oh, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> that was scruffy, Dan. Pop it in third to get a better drive over the crest. Let's see if we can get the run out the final corner. Oh, that's good. But it's not good enough. We're still going to be too far back, even with some slipstream here. That lap time was 48.68. Oh, he's struggling, I think. Just got to get that run.
Wait for the car to go light. Boom. Okay, Dan. Stay close. Wait for him to make a mistake. Oh, I'm trying. Terrible run. Terrible run. Two minutes 40 remaining. So what? Three laps? Four laps, maybe? Three laps. That lap was a 48.86. Oh, he's done the same as me! Little, uh, push, push, push. We can catch this car. He made the same mistake in the same spot I made it! The universe has corrected itself. Let's hold it, though. Let's hold it. Two minutes for P9. Oh, is he four tenths behind? Oh, he's too far back to use the slipstream there. We've definitely lost touch with the guys ahead. That was never our fight. Now I think about it. P9. That last lap was a 48.76. Too much inside curb. That's going to throw it wide. Blue flag. That's second place coming up behind. He's got to deal with Hugo first. Okay, Dan. The next car is Herbie. Am I going to have enough fuel? I don't think I'm going to have enough fuel. That's good consistency. Keep it up. The lap time was at 48.90. Sector 1 is 0 0.44. Off the pace. Oh, 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 oh. No. Oh, damn it, Dan. I was lucky to put my fuel numbers. Car's okay. Car's okay. Oh, stupid, 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 stupid. Oh, he just thrown away a top 10. I gotta go into fuel save mode as well. I gotta make it through another lap. Go, 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 go. Turn that engine mix all the way up. Let's hold on to whatever position this is. I think it's 11th. Turn that mix back down a bit. P11, last lap. Oh, it's still 11th, it's still 11th, that's not bad. One litre remaining. Oh, Dan, why'd you do this to yourself, mate? Oh, I'm not the only one that's done it, though! There's a freebie there, back into the top 10. We've got 2.2 seconds to the guy behind. Few more corners. Use fourth. Use fourth. And that's lap traffic as well. It's cutting out. It's cutting out. Come on. Come on. Yellow flag. Watch out. Woo. <laughs> Tenth position. Okay, that's the finish. Well done. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not a lot of fuel left in the tank. <laughs> oh, that was far closer than it needed to be. I need to check my numbers for next time. I must have used a lot more fuel than I was expecting there. That was a little bit more exciting than it needed to be. And it's officially out of fuel now. <laughs> that was too close. All right, guys, let's go back and have a look at the replay and... Yeah, look at the key moments from the race. So here we are at the start on the run down to the first corner. Uh, lots of people getting pinballed everywhere. I had to get way on the brakes to avoid going into the back of that Ferrari there. And again, oh, he gets punted. I, I try and avoid it, and then old mate gets past me on the inside, but I'm not going to have any of that. I'll get that position back. Thank you very much. And then this guy in the black and red on the left, he was super sketchy, and I knew I had to get past him pretty quickly as well. And I seize my opportunity here in the first section of lap number two. So I can see he's been hung out to dry on the outside there. I get the cut back here, hold it nice and tight, get the drive, and then just clean, go around the outside of him there. 
Hold it round, hold it round, which then becomes the inside for this corner. And that's it up to position 15. And now we're on lap number 24, and this is where I start to lose a stack of time. You can see old mate behind me flashing the lights. I mean, who does he think he is? He's not JB. I'm, <laughs> it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work, mate, but you got a pace advantage. You're gonna get past anyway. But look, there again, pulling out to the right and flashing the lights again. Yeah, I got a terrible run through the final corner, and then he just gets the drive. And surprisingly, he's not flashing the lights now. And that's simple as that, really. Just, yeah, clean and simple overtook me like that into turn one. And that's that's how you have to do it at Lime Rock here. So now we're on lap 29. And you remember there were two cars facing the wrong way on the track. Okay, this is what happened. So look up the road a little bit further. The guy in the Lamborghini with the yellow wheel hubs. He loses the rear end, gets slidey. The people ahead react to the circumstance. Let's have a look at that again, shall we? Yeah, old mate who was flashing the headlights did not read the situation or didn't want to read the situation said i'm going through anyway and yeah punted so that's why there were two cars they didn't collide someone spun he slowed down and then got taken out as a result of it but i called it in the race i said he was going to be aggressive and basically he got us a couple of freebies so lap 32 now and i'm pretty close to this guy ahead of me yeah i've been keeping up with him so i think oh fancy my chances here i'll leave my pit stop as late as possible and here it is here's that pit entry <laughs> I guess I wasn't going to decide when I was coming into the pits. That piece of grass on the outside of the final corner was going to do it for me. Looking at this again in slow motion, I'm actually not sure how I saved this. Look, 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 almost full opposite lock and then gather it up again. And luckily, not into the barrier on the on the side of the track. And look, there's the lights. The lights are off. The engine's off. <laughs> That's me pressing the wrong button, slowing it down to... Uh, 28 kilometers, at least I didn't speed coming into the pits. Right, let's fast forward to lap number 43. And I'm holding on to position nine here. I've got the red Ferrari behind me. This is where I made that mistake. Look how much curb I take on the inside. Boom, there it is. And then it just pushes me wide. Very lucky not to... Oh, that was close. Did I actually touch the barrier there? Oh, it's close. It's close. Oh, the lightest of touches with the rear left. That could have been disastrous if it if it had been any more speed in that contact. That could have sent me spinning the other way. And that would have been game over, man. And of course, what this does is gives the position to Mr. Ferrari. Lap number 46. But let's ride on board with him. He doesn't hit the curb. He just runs it wide. This is exactly the same thing that I did, but just not to the same extent. And I'm through, back up into ninth, for now. So lap number 48, only two to go at this point. I'm busy looking up at the top of the screen as I'm ahead, so checking the fuel numbers and onto the grass. Oh, rookie mistake. Past the Maldonado worthy, that would be. Very light tap into the barrier. No real damage that I can see, apart from just some minor cosmetic prangs and bangs. The mirrors are still there, the wheels are kind of pointing in the same direction still. Although that is another repair bill for Ed Trevelyan Johnson. He's, he's really starting to rack up the dollars. <laughs> Now here's the guy ahead of me, the guy who is running in 8th position at the moment. The engine's gone, and there he is sputtering by the side of the track, so that's a freebie. So he was in 8th, that puts us up from 11th to 10th, but now we've got to try and hold on. Yeah, only just enough fuel left at the end of the race, you can see them closing in there. And there's the guy behind, there's me crossing the line, that's how close it was. Let's go and have a look at the results. Alrighty, there it is, and that was actually a top split GT3 race. <laughs> I'm getting pretty fed up with these top splits, because whenever I'm in a top split, I'm at the lower end of the top split. I wouldn't mind being in a middle split for once I racing, but anyway. Plus 21 I rating, and plus 06 safety rating. So, moving in the right direction. And only four incident points as well, which I'm actually kind of happy with. I was, I was expecting a lot more than that, considering how easy it is to run wide and get an off track here. But to sum up the results then, I started in 18th, finished in 10th, which I am actually car number 10, I suppose. iRacing gets it right once again. I enjoyed that. That was fun. That wasn't as chaotic as I was expecting it to be. Well, not for the first half of the race, at least. It got a bit lively at the end, but that was only really because of my stupidity with the fuel numbers and people running different strategies and the traffic kind of getting mixed up into it as well. It was a bit backwards and forwards, but yeah, no, that was good. It's a bit of a different race than the all-out sprint kind of 20-minute formats that most of the other series seem to run. I enjoy the longer format with the pit stop. Um, I might even give the VRS Enduro series a go, because they're more like three hours, and I believe they run on the same circuits. I'll go and check this now. You probably correct me in the comments if I'm wrong anyway. But yeah, I get to team up with someone and basically do a co-driver race. That'd be pretty epic. So 
If you guys want to get involved, message me in the comments, send me a message on Discord, and yeah, if, if I'm around and you're around, we'll let's do a race. But no, I enjoyed that. That was fun. And if you guys enjoyed it as well, don't forget to leave the video a like, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe because I will definitely be doing more GT3 VRS series. But until then, you guys look after yourselves. Thank you so much again for watching, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.